Watch you guys, I've got an iPad 4 screen replacement video here for you. I'm going to be using this hot air rework station to remove the glass, uh, to loosen up the glue, and you can control the heat with this a lot better. And uh, we've got the screen replacement here, which is the new digitizer, and also the glue strips. I've got two strips of these. Also some clamps to clamp it down if you wish to clamp the screen down once you've finished. Some gloves to protect your hands and protect the screen. And uh, we've got a nice little uh, prying tool here which I purchased to help pry the plastic out. A suction cup which is about has got as much suction as an old granny with no teeth. Some glue, ultra glue gel. Some little screwdrivers which come with a set. And also some uh, spudgers here which we can use to uh, pull back the actual ribbons. And also some prying tools which we're going to be using as well. These are nice and thin at the end, as you can see, to get in there. Okay, and we've got a pair of tweezers to pull back some of the uh, sticky tape there and uh, some toothpick to wedge open the actual glass and also a replacement button, which comes with the set as well. Okay. Now, some of these tools you can purchase on eBay. So here we have our screen. Uh, as you can see, there's some nasty cracks on this screen and right around the, the button area, there's a really nasty impact point there, which damaged the actual uh, home button uh, assembly. So we had to uh, replace that as well. But this is the actual prying tool that we're going to be using. It's so thin and flexible. This is going to allow us to get a purchase point on the, underneath the glass so we can pry it up and separate the glue. Now you can use uh, heat guns to heat around these areas here. Be very careful around here. You've got the actual wireless antenna and also there's a ribbon down here for the digitizer, which isn't that important because we're replacing that. So here we've got the prime tool in now. I've added a little bit of heat and got the prime tool just got inside underneath the glass there. Now you can use different types of uh, tools to get underneath there. It depends on whatever uh, you're used to using. Now I'm going to add a little bit of heat here, taking in mind, checking as you go along that it's not getting too hot. Okay. The beauty of these rework stations is that you can control the heat and how much heat you want to actually uh, put on. Now we're concentrating on the uh, right hand side more than anything because that's where we're going to open it from. Being an iPad 4, you open it from right to left. So I'm concentrating on rounded a button area there. Now I'm going to get me a prying tool here and try to slide it under the glass and move it up. Just trying to get some leverage here. You just be uh, just be a little bit careful with the little plastic gasket that goes on the outside, and uh, just pry up. Now it just doesn't matter if the glass breaks here. Okay, just don't want to damage all the outside. Just try another tool here and get some uh, leverage under there. Once you get started, it's not too bad. So I'm just prying up on the glass. There we go. So we're in. And now all we need to do here is just slide that along. Now once you find some resistance here, you want to add a little bit more heat, okay? So as you can see, it's starting to put a bit of resistance up. So out comes the heat gun and add some more heat. So that's basically the process here add a bit of heat and then pry away and then add some more heat and so on and so on. Okay, so now we've added a bit of heat, we can actually use our prying tool to work our way up the iPad to separate the glass. Now you will have to use a little bit of force, but not too much. Now if the glass does shatter, don't panic, it's uh, a cracked glass already. So we're just gonna work our way up, add a bit of pressure if you feel any resistance, too much resistance, stop and add more heat. Now I've got a couple of prying tools in there now. I'm just going to separate the glue a bit more. You'll find it will start to re-stick again once it starts to get cold. So I'll put a little wedge in there, a little pick in there to try and give it a bit of height. So I can continually work my way around. So just add a little bit more heat around near this Wi-Fi area. I don't want that sticking to there, so I just want to make sure that I use a little bit more heat around there. 
Now on the left hand side it doesn't really matter so much. I don't need to put vast amounts of heat there. Just continually move around the top and around that Wi-Fi area because that's the part I'm going to tackle next. Now that did take a big impact point there. So I'm expecting to be a bit of broken glass here. I'm trying to just lift this up a little bit. I'm using a very thin prime tool here so I don't damage the Wi-Fi antenna. Now if it does get damaged you can always order a new one on eBay so not all's lost. So I'm just breaking away the glass here as you can see where it's been shattered. So I'm just going to pick away and hopefully not damage anything underneath. Just take it very slowly okay at this stage. So what I'm going to do here is move on to the button area as you can see it took a big impact point there. So I'm going to add some more heat up the top now and around the left hand side and work our way around. So there's only a little way to go now. So we're just going to add a bit more heat here and then have a final push to remove that. Now I'm not too worried about the glass breaking here because we're going to replace it and it is badly broken already. So I'm just going to have a little pry around this edge here. Just going to push along. You've got to be careful the cameras around this area here. So you just got to be careful and you see a little bit of a shatter there. But not to worry, you're just going to continue pry away and lift the glass a little bit. Okay, so this had a little bit more heat on the uh, left hand side along the top area here and we'll just try to get this digitizer lifted from the iPad itself. Now you can see it's starting to badly uh, crack up and that's because the screen was badly shattered so I'm not expecting it to stay in one piece. It's very difficult to pull this apart. Now you can wear gloves at this stage if you wish. And that's the actual screen now, separated. Now be very careful here with the LCD. We do not want to touch that with our hands at all. So you want to try and prop that digitizer up with a box. And then put some gloves on. So we can then remove the LCD screen. Now there's four screws that hold the LCD screen in. And there may be a bit of a debris on the actual LCD, so don't rub it. Use compressed air. So I'm just going to unscrew these four screws here. And this will allow us to remove the LCD screen. Now once the LCD screen has been removed, we can put that in a safe place. Now these screws are very small. You may want to keep them in a safe place. So I'm just going to use the prying tool here to just get underneath the left or right hand corner where the screw goes and lift that up. Now again you don't want to get no oily fingerprints on the LCD screen because you'll find it very difficult to remove. So we need to pull the ribbon away from the iPad and we're going to use a pair of tweezers here to remove the actual sticker that's actually holding the cable in or across the cable. And then we need to just pry away. There's a little tiny flap there. You can use your spudger of what you get in the kit just to lift that up or you can use your finger. Now be very careful here. You don't want to break this just take your time and it should just lift up and then all you need to do here is just pull the ribbon back it's going to be a bit tacky so just pull that back carefully and then pull the ribbon 
back towards the digitizer and that should be free now you want to clean this uh, LCD off with uh, some compressed air to remove any debris from it okay so let's go ahead and remove the sticker that's on the digitizer here you can use a pair of tweezers just to pick away at the uh, sticker now once the sticker's been pulled back a little bit you can use if you don't have a pair of tweezers you can actually use the uh, plastic spudger but this will show us the actual uh, catch that we need to pull back now once we get that off we need to remove the home button assembly here and that's held on by two little screws and then we need to remove the button itself and also the camera metal camera attachment at the other end and they're just glued on we can use our prying tool to remove those so just remove these here now the home button assembly was damaged on this on impact so we had to order a new one and it was an absolute nightmare to get into that little adapter so if it's it is a bit obsolete you don't need to use them the actual unit will work without it but we just put it back on so I'm just gonna remove all this and then remove the digitizer from the actual iPad itself I'm gonna pull the cable back here now you, you're gonna find this glass and glue stuck to this where it shattered so just if yours is not broken just take it steady and pull it back and keep it safe and tuck it away there and then now we can remove the actual digitizer cable now you use your plastic spudger here and just lift up that little ribbon it will be stuck with a bit of adhesive just pull it up a little bit and then all you need to do here you can either use your thumb or this spudger itself to remove that little catch and pull back to release the actual screen from the unit I'm sorry you can't see much here because my big hands in the way it's the best shot I can get with that uh, camera I'm going to just pull this back bit of glue stuck on there and that's away and that's free okay so what you want to do now is clean off all the excess glass that's around the outside that may have been left behind and you can just peel away any remnants of glue it'll be black now don't confuse the uh, black Wi-Fi ribbon or anything like that and start pulling away at that it's just the glue and the glass that you need to remove okay so be very careful so all we need to do here now is add a little bit more heat if we need to be careful this little Wi-Fi antenna down the bottom there just add a little bit of heat from the leftover glass if you have any that's very stubborn and then once we've done that we can use our prying tool to pry away and remove any of the leftover glass that may be left on the unit okay this needs to be spotless when you've finished so just use your pry tool to lift away any of the glass that's left behind now you will see loads of little splinters of the glass falling inside just use some compressed air or compressor to remove any of the leftover glass okay so let's get the uh, glue strips in now there's two types of glue strips here if you've bought the iPad free uh, digitizer the actual glue strips are going to be slightly different to the iPad 4 uh, glue strips okay so you may want to get yourself another set of those uh, but the actual iPad free digitizer will fit on an iPad 4 okay they're actually identical 
So uh, I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to pull these back and stick them around the actual outside of the uh, iPad. Now you don't want to be putting these actual strips of glue on the black sort of gasket that goes around the outside, okay? You want to slide it on the inside of that, okay? So just take your time and pull that back. There is a bit of play in these, they're not that tacky, you can lift them back up if you go wrong. Now this bit is a bit fiddly, so just uh, get it in position. So once we get all this in position, what we're going to do is uh, use a bit of super glue on top of the actual sticky pad okay super glue gel only a minute amount and this will allow us to get a good bond on the actual screen itself okay now I found this uh, sticky tape not to be as strong as it I thought it would be so I just chose to use that method now you may be thinking that what happens if you want to remove that glass again well the actual glue adhesive will be actually on the tape so once you heat the gun up onto the screen again the actual tape will loosen up which is where the glue is so it will be easily removed so we've got that in place now I'll just work my way around and put the rest of this tape on like so so what we want to do now is uh, had the ohm assembly in here and it was an absolute nightmare to put that little uh, clip in there it was a it was so small but we managed to get it on and now I'm going to offer up the digitizer here and get this in place now there's a bit of fiddling and fettling here so just take your time and, uh, and it should be okay Okay, so there's a couple of little white lines on this ribbon and this will tell you the depth that you have to push that cable into to make sure that you've got a good seating of that cable and once you get it in you'll be able to push the locking mechanism down and that should be enough to hold that in place and a new digitizer cable comes with a couple of little stickers on it that helps it stick to the iPad itself so it won't move about just push that in a little bit and then we can lock that down now you can either lock it down with your finger or you can use a, a spudge at all whatever you feel comfortable with Okay, so that's pushed, pushed down nice now. And all we need to do here is just tuck that cable back. And hold that in place. Now once you get it in position, you can use a box to prop up the digitizer. So we'll just pull this box up just to hold that in position. So what we're going to deal with now is the home assembly button. I've already put the button back in and the little housing unit it goes with. And now all we need to do now is screw the cable onto that with the two little screws that we saved from our last strip down. Now these screws are tiny and fiddly and it takes a bit of time to get it into position but it's held in by two screws so 
So I'm just going to show you the one screw here to go in. You get the general idea. And then we'll move on to the uh, LCD screen here. Now again, this is a bit fiddly. So you may want to prop that up a little bit. We'll find a way that you're comfortable with doing it yourself. We have a trial and error really. So just get this into position. And once we get this into the right position here, we'll be able to push the cable in. And then it's a done deal. Just use your thumb there to uh, push the locking mechanism down. And again, I can't stress enough, having gloves on is very important at this stage. We do not want any greasy fingers on that LCD screen. Get yourself that bit of tape that you saved and stick that over the actual cable part here. Now that's not essential because it should hold into place with a locking mechanism but just want to try and keep it exactly how it was when it came out. Okay so all you need to do now is apply the four screws back to our LCD screen so it locks that in place. So now we're just going to do a final clean up of the screen before we lock it into position. I'll just use a compressed air here and a microfiber cloth so there's no bits of fluff that's left behind. Lint free cloth you can use. But I'll be using tissue paper or nothing like that. So make sure there's no dust whatsoever. I'm going to just do a trial run here and offer this up without the glue just to see how that sits to make sure everything marries up okay and you can fire it up at this stage if you wish just to see whether everything is working before you glue it down and that's what I'd advise you to do okay before you start committing to the glue process. So now we've got this all in position. Just going to prop this up and remove all the sticky tape now for the final stage. Just pull off all the top layer. Once you've done that, this uh, is your optional for yourself if you wish. Uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of glue as you can see here, just dabbing it away on top of the tape itself. Tiny amounts, okay, not massive amounts. You don't want it squirting all inside. Now we're going to finally do the final closing up. Make sure everything is flush. Put some pressure on it. Now you, this is optional as well. You can use clamps to clamp it into position if you wish to hold it there for an hour or so. Or 20 minutes or whatever you feel comfortable with. Now if you don't wish to use clamps, you can put a bit of pressure on it with a book or so on top. This just makes sure you get a really good tight bond and a good snug fit, okay, so you don't have no lip on the outside of the glass. Uh, just put some pressure around now with your thumb. And uh, you should have a real 
good bond there. So just work your way around. Okay, so just add a bit of pressure all the way around on the edge. Now again, if you don't have the clamps, don't worry about it. You could use a book on top for an hour or so and two, you get a good bond. Okay, and it's important, that's the important part to make sure you get a good bond on that glue. Okay. And if you're worrying about the uh, super glue gel, then you can leave that method out also if you wish. But if you want a good finish, that's the way to go. And just the final quick buff up with a micro cloth, micro cloth and uh, we'll uh, get that nice and shiny. And I'll show you the actual seam in a second. You'll see it looks okay, don't look too bad. It's got a nice flush finish. Now obviously it's never ever going to be as good as what it was when it left the factory. Um, but it's near as damn it. Or as near as what you're going to get it. A final little buff up there and there you can see the actual finish quite a nice flush finish as you can see and uh, I think you agree so I hope you stuck it out to the end it's been a bit of a long video and as you can see there's no play in that screen at all so all in all I think it's been a good job so I try to chop out as much as I could and make it more watchable so I hope you enjoyed it my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk if you enjoy these videos hit that subscribe button guys and share support by rating and favoriting all my videos and I'll be making more useful videos again in the future. So thanks again guys and thanks for your support. Bye for now.